All right, hi guys, so as we said, uh, my name is Rashad and we've got Sam over here. We'll be helping you out through the next three days. Um, so we've just got a three day APA course. I'll go over a little bit of introduction into Leap Australia, who we are. Um, we'll then log on to the academic portal. So the academic portal is where all our tutorials uh, and some of our lectures will, also, will all be hosted. Uh, we'll be updating that throughout the years and just throughout the days. So if you do need any content, um, feel free to log on afterwards and, and, and talk to us, send us an email. Um, we'll go over that. We'll then take Sam and Sam's gonna go into the workflow of FEA and we'll go through a, a tutorial as well. So um, Leap Australia, who are we? So we represent the companies shown on the screen and we help in support, training and advice in CAD, CAM and CAE software around Australia and New Zealand. We started off in 1996. Uh, we have around 2,000 customers to date and we've got around 50 employees around Australia and New Zealand uh, with around eight major offices. So we'll log on to the Leap Academic Portal. So this will be the starting screen. Um, I'll switch over. So this will be the starting screen that everyone sees. So I've already logged on, but on the top right hand corner, there's a login. Um, for the students, please use your academic password, uh, your academic um, email address. You should not log on as normal. You get an email address that comes out to confirm who you are, and this is what you'll see. So on the top, you'll see on the right hand side, we've got the three day FEA course. If you click on that, it takes you to the agenda. So this will be the agenda for the next three days. Um, I understand that there are some people that will want to go on their own pace. You know, feel free to do so. We've got everything up here. Uh, but if you can, just you know, come along with us as well. Um, so we'll have you know a bit of an introduction to start off with. Five minute Q and A, and you can see underneath that we've got um, just the tutorials. We'll head straight into. So we'll start off with the introduction. We'll go through that for the whole day. Tomorrow we'll do some dynamics. Um, some thermal and then we've got some non-linear as well and on the last day towards the end of the session we've also got uh, an introduction to some of the CAD software within ANSYS called Space Plane that's used for uh, preparing the geometry. Uh, we can go into that or if you've got any uh, specific projects that you're working on, anything you want to kind of have a sit down chat with, we can go through those as well on a one-on-one like -on -one basis. So with the portal, if you click on the actual link um, so Mechanical Basics, it'll take you to the relevant course page and you can see that we've got a bunch of different um, courses. So just click on the relevant course, so whatever it's named, you'll see a Basics and a PDF as well. Um, the Mechanical Basics is where the actual tutorials are. So you'll have the, a PDF that's a step-by-step -step, and you'll also have any associated geometry files or any associated workbench files with that. Uh, within that as well, you can see that introduction, that's also that's a part of the lectures that we've got. So normally if you come to us, um, we've got a, a course that goes through and there are essentially a bunch of lectures and tutorials associated with that, exactly like what we're doing today. So they're available for you as well. So at any point, if you need to kind of go back and reference them, um, feel free to do that. Um, at the top as well, you can see under structural, we've got the theory guide. So I'll just highlight that. So we've got a couple of different guides that, uh, that we use. So we've got the user guide. There are some tutorials on there as well, under mechanical tutorials. If at any point you don't see um, any relevant tutorials to whatever you're doing, and you can see them in the tutorial guide, please just send us an email, um, and I'll, look to, I'll find the files and we'll send them through to you. Um, and there's also the, there's some analysis guides for explicit um, and composite as well. So it does go into a little bit more detail uh, of what we're going to be going over today. That's all right. Awesome, so we'll just go over just a quick brief. So why are we using simulations? Well, we have the ability to design, to troubleshoot, and also optimize before building a physical prototype. And this allows us to save time and money down the line. With this physical prototype and this validated uh, model, we can create what's called a digital twin. So we have a virtual representation of this physical product. It allows us to iterate and improve the design which means that we can make changes and be confident in our results. So why are you here? Why should you use ANSYS? One of the key defining features of ANSYS is the fact that you're able to do all these complicated systems and multi-integrated, multi-simulations of different physics all in one common flat platform. Uh, obviously today we're not really going to be going over too many different physics, 
but be aware it's, it's there. So if you do want a little bit more help, some more tutorials, um, or you're interested in using more of these for your designs, please let us know. You know and, and why do we need to do this? Why do we need system level design? Why do we need multi-physics? It's because the engineering problems today are getting more and more complex. Years ago it was single physics problems, but now we're designing multi-physics, we're designing whole systems. So we need to understand how systems work, how, how multiple systems come into, and how they integrate together. And with the answer simulation tools, it allows you to use this common platform to do a structural, to do a fluids, to do an electronic analysis, and understand how the system works together. Using these tools as well, we can then go and optimize. So we can do a, you know, a, a, a multi, a physics simulation and optimize that system as well. One of the exciting things as well that we want to touch on today, we won't go into it too much, but if you are interested, please do let us know, is the use of augmented reality and the Internet of Things. So we're combining these two things. So we've got our physical simulations within the virtual, uh, virtual environment and we've got a physical product as well and we're combining these things within the future. Um, I'll show you just a quick video of what we're talking about. For decades, companies have used simulation as a product development tool to discover failures and flaws in their designs. Now, engineers are using simulation after their products are built, sold, and deployed in the field. It's called a digital twin, a complete digital replica that operates in real time, giving engineers unprecedented visibility into the performance of their products. Here's a simple example. This industrial pump has multiple sensors providing real-time information. In this example, the sensor's data is fed into the IoT platform, where engineers can monitor the normal operations of the pump. Here an anomaly is introduced, as a valve is closed, prompting an alert and the need to troubleshoot the problem. The ANSYS simulation platform allows engineers to evaluate all possible inputs and operating conditions. Users can model a complete system and integrate live sensor data, creating a near real-time environment. By reproducing the problem virtually with the digital twin, you can identify and analyze the cause, purpose, and test corrective actions. When an anomaly is detected, ANSYS takes data from the system model and sends it to the Edge on-prem data center or cloud, allowing for automatic 3D simulation to model the specific nature of the problem. The digital twin allows for diagnosis and in-depth root cause analysis for physical assets in the field. Here, the root cause of the anomaly is identified by 3D simulation to be cavitation in the pump, as visualized by the purple vapor bubbles. The user can perform what-if scenarios on the digital twin for both testing and further optimization. With the ANSYS platform, customized user experiences can be easily implemented. This allows for ease of use and communication through similar graphical interfaces that are customizable for each user. At this point, the user validates the corrective action found on the system model will remedy the problem on the physical asset through in-depth 3D on-demand simulation. Here, you can see that no more bubbles are present and the pump is once again operating properly. The cavitation issues have been corrected in the digital twin and can now be applied to its real-world counterpart. Digital twins require a complex and comprehensive knowledge of systems engineering. Only ANSYS has the breadth and depth of simulation experience to bring the full power of digital twins to your engineering challenges. So hopefully that helps you guys understand where you can use what you're learning now uh, within the actual workforce. And it's, again, if you're interested in any of this stuff, we, uh, we sell and support some of the PTC suites that deal with the Internet of Things and augmented reality. So please come talk to us afterwards. Um, so I'll hand it over, so we've gone over the three-day agenda, I'll hand it over to Sam, and Sam's gonna go over the workflow for FEA, and then what we'll do, we'll head straight into one of the tutorials.